Okay, what's up? Hello. How are you, James? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. TGIF. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank God it's Friday. Yeah, we should change that. We should just say TSIF from now on. Thanks, Satan. It's Friday. Mm-hmm. Going to get into some debaucherous stuff because it's the weekend. Thank you, Satan. Yeah, the, we- <laughs> the weekend really is Satan's domain. Uh-huh. Yep. On the seventh day, God rested, and Satan also rested because he had a he had a serious ecstasy hangover from Saturday night. <laughs> yep, God's like I'm man. I've created the whole planet and the people and the animals and the earth. I gotta take take me a nap. And Satan's like I gotta take me a nap too. I really, just like left it all out on the dance floor at this at the Skrillex warehouse. At the what? <laughs> <laughs> At the you know Skrillex where they warehouse. Uh huh. Yeah. So the Skrillex warehouse. Do you rave to Skrillex or is that term outdated now? I don't know. Do I've you, never been do to a you, rave. I don't know how they go. Do you dubstep to dubstep or, or what? Yeah, I think, well, dubstep is the dance that you do while you're listening to it. Ah, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like yeah. tango music. Yeah. Yeah. You do the dubstep. It's, you know, it's like, it's, it's like the, you know, the Charleston shuffle. Yeah. Or, uh-huh. Or the the Cincinnati two shoes, yeah. But it just involves like jerking your body around in a way that makes it look like there's a strobe light on, even when there's not. Yeah, and uh, you know, I so I, you of course, James, know the history of. I mean, it was originally called the this is the Minnesota dubstep. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the yeah. 1920s when it was invented. Um, yeah, and of course, started in the, a dance club out there in Minnesota. DJ was playing playing a record on his phonograph, um, mm-hmm. but Turning also that crank. Also was polishing his big heavy bowling ball for the bowling ball competition that night, and then oops, it slipped out of his hands. Bowling ball dropped right onto the record. That was the original drop, and everybody <laughs> in the audience went crazy. The dubstep <laughs> dance was invented because it did break the record player, and so the record kind of s- spun to a stop really quick, and the music did this cool like thing. Yeah, it got blah, everybody blah, blah, going. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it was it was really weird. It was a technological marvel. Those were the noises it made after the bowling ball hit the floor and like bounced a couple of times, so the needle just kind of scratched across the record. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that that fateful bowling DJ was, of course, Aphex Twin. It was Aphex Twin. Yep. <laughs> 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 oh, we owe we owe him so much. Yep. Uh, James, do you want to record a podcast? Yeah, yeah, let's do. Let's do it. Can you give me the drop? And then the theme song starts. Movie Improvy. Hello. Hello. This is the world's first and foremost film repair podcast. I'm your licensed and board certified film repair technician, Film Stressman. And I'm your executive film form, James Kettler. That's you. But up, up, but up, up. All right, let's let's cut the jibber jabber. Mm-hmm. I, I want to jump right into trailer time because I've actually come with a trailer ready this time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it does touch on uh, a little bit what we were talking about. Before the show started, not the not the dubstep stuff, but the Satan and God stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you want to open up your uh, your Bing search bar real quick there and type in "Let There Be Light" trailer, I have to do it on Bing or or Alta Vista or whatever. <laughs> I feel like it is canon on this show that that you do prefer the Bing search engine. <laughs> is it? Yeah, because be your true. nickname's Bing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Was that? I don't yep, know. That, that was a bit we did. Yep. <laughs> Does this show have canon? Do we have canon? Yeah, we have canon. We're okay. well, we have canon, but it can be radically altered at any time, much like the Highlander <laughs> universe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. You should be looking at a picture of Kevin Sorbo waving his hands around in the air. Oh, yep, I got it. I'm ready. All right. 
Oh, man. More Kevin Sorbo Christian movies. Yeah, he directed this one. Oh, is he sipping scotch behind the wheel? You can't be doing that, Kevin. Oh, I thought that was the end. Oh, for fuck's sake. So after producing Kevin Sorbo's last however many movies, Sean Hannity finally demanded a cameo. Yeah. I'm going to be in this one. Yeah, it's weird. He's actually playing God. He's the alt-right God. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so this is uh, this movie, Let There Be Light. It's just like every it's it's god's not dead again and also god's not dead too again yeah where kevin sorbo plays uh an atheist who oh he hate the god but he hate the god because his life bad and he just don't understand that god works in mysterious ways and if you accept god's love into your heart you you'll be able to deal with your problems kevin sorbo Yeah, I also like the implication in this movie that he's a big atheist because it pays the bills yeah I wish yeah. I got paid to be an atheist. <laughs> I think that would make you Bill Maher, Phil. Ugh, no, he gets paid to be a douche nozzle. Um, yeah. Well, James, you, you know, you've said something that is interesting to me, uh, and it does it is similar to films we've made in the past. It's a theme that we come back to a lot, but you did say that God is dead again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we've done a movie about killing God, and we've done movies where God's a dickhead, but what we haven't done is a Weekends at Bernie's where all the Christians find out that God is actually dead and then try and lug his body around and convince everybody that he's alive still. <laughs> so just a, just a historical drama about the creation of Christianity then. What was he got? He Oh, so with Jesus, you're talking about Jesus... Well, I was just talking about Christians convincing people that there is a God when there's not. That's that's basically the that's the whole thing, right? Yeah, but um, but no, I like your twist on it even more. So, uh, it's you know all of Jesus's buddies, the uh, apostles, mm-hmm. Paul, John, John, yeah, Nick, Donnie, Ringo. <laughs> I think that we immediately went to boy pants. <laughs> <laughs> But no, so they're telling everybody, they're like, look, you can nail our our boy as God. You can nail him to whatever. And he'll come back. He's immortal. <laughs> nice try, idiots. But then yeah. he fucking super doesn't. Yeah. So then it's them like like weekends at Bernie and Jesus and carrying him around trying to convince everybody that he is immortal and has come back to life. So it's kind of, it's kind of like Life of Brian where it's like far set in Bible times, but it's just about like Paul and Steve and whoever just going into the cave and like putting Jesus's arms over their shoulders and putting sunglasses on him and just being like, Oh, I have risen. He has risen. <laughs> who, who wants some, who wants some fish? And they've got like strings tied to his arms and then they just <laughs> stuffed fish and bread under his sleeves and they're just <laughs> flopping his arms around and like throwing food to everybody. But it's Bible time. So everybody's real stupid. They don't know about science yet. So they're like, Holy fucking shit. Damn. He's a, He's alive. He smells terrible. <laughs> it's the stench of God on him. Oh yeah. Weekend at weekend at Christie's. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Weekend at Christie's. <laughs> I was also going to suggest, and I know we've pitched this exact idea before. I think in the Shack episode, but just this movie. But instead of finding God, he finds Satan. Because you know God's whole deal. Especially in these movies, he doesn't actually, like, give you what you want or solve your problems. Mm -hmm. It's basically just, like, learn to like me and deal with the shit I do. And that sucks. Yeah. So, yeah, just a movie where it's Satan, and Satan's like, oh, you want your son back? Boom, here he is. Have him. He's yours. But he is going to spew vomit on you and spin his head around in circles. So look out for that. Yeah, but it'll, it'll wear off by the time he hits puberty, probably. My, or maybe. get worse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just the devil. I don't know. I'm not a details guy. Yeah, I'm just, boom, instant gratification. No thoughts to the consequences. <laughs> James, should we do another trailer? Yeah, do you have another one? Because I don't. That was the only one I had ready. Um, we could take a, so are there, there are some new ones on the old Apple trailers here. I'm intrigued by... We did mention the Grinch movie last week. We didn't actually watch the trailer. Mm, we can oh, because we casted Benedict Cumberbatch from it. Yeah. Let's scope that out real fast. I bet it's bad. Oh, cool. There's already minions. <laughs> yeah. Ha. You remember that funny YouTube video from like 10 years ago with the screaming goats? 
Yeah, if that's the level of humor you're looking for, this movie's got it. I hated that so much. I can't yeah, even begin really to tell you. Yeah, that was a really bad trailer for the Grinch movie. It was uh, 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 identical to every other cynical and half-baked cgi children's movie trailer that we've watched. But it did present me with one intriguing idea. Oh, it did? The Grinch baby is an orphanage? Uh-huh. Who kill him? Parents. <laughs> Joe Cool. <laughs> <laughs> the Bat Grinch? Is that where you were yeah, headed with that? I think it's the Bat Grinch. I think that <laughs> his parents get killed. He clearly has a lot of money, right? He inherited a massive fortune because he does have um, body-sized brushes and elaborate dog copters. And, you know, he's got access to a lot of technology. Mm -hmm. But what if instead of using said technology to steal Christmas from a bunch of, um, whatchamacallit, who's? He uses it to battle supervillains. But what if the supervillains are... What if Santa killed his parents and the supervillains are all Christmas-themed? What if it's a Wicked-esque, like, misunderstood anti-hero tale where the Grinch was actually right about Christmas the whole time and Christmas is evil? Yeah, Christmas is real bad and Christmas lights are all, you know, they're, car they're carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. It's giving, giving everybody melanoma. Everyone is actually allergic to pine trees. The Christmas industry just doesn't want you to know that. Oh, man. It's the biggest cover-up. Every day you're around a pine tree, it's like smoking a pack of cigarettes. Also, it's basically just like a celebration of of of, of unhinged and wanton like consumerism. And people go out and spend money they, they don't have on presents that other people don't want. And we all throw them in the garbage and quietly resent each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And these 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 concepts are all personified in the form of villains, like a guy who's he's a big old Christmas tree, or another one is, um, you know, he gives you things that you don't that you don't need. His his name's just Uncle Jerry. Yeah, Uncle Jerry's always giving me flashlights. I don't want them. <laughs> don't want these, Uncle Jerry. I would take the flashlights over the flashlights he's been giving me for fifteen years. Stop projecting your own interests onto me. <laughs> hey bud you remember that one time six years ago when you were watching tv and a commercial for a food processor came on and you thought that looked neat anyways here's a blender <laughs> <laughs> won't process shit <laughs> barely chop up ice cubes and then the grinch swings in in his bat costume and beats the fucking piss out of uncle jerry's pants yeah <laughs> Uncle Jerry pisses his pants, and then Bat Grinch beats the piss out of the pants. He beats yeah. the pants till they dry. <laughs> and then gives you those, which is what you actually wanted. <laughs> oh, clean pants, thank you. Yes, the Bat Grinch. Man, let's, uh, I guess let's tackle this fucking movie. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, hold on one sec. Abby's scratching at the door. Okay. She wants to be a part of this. Abby needed all of us to know her great ideas for Highlander. Yeah, I'll bet a lot of them are just dog noises. <laughs> All right, yeah, so let's hop into, Phil, what movie we we doing this week? So we did one of the Highlander 2s. <laughs> <laughs> one of the four Highlander 2s. Like, two of these, Highlander, two different Highlander 2s came out in theaters the year it was released. They couldn't even decide on one. Yeah, because there was a U.S. cut and a U.K. cut, right? Yeah, man. And uh, we did we did watch the director's cut for hours because it's what was on Amazon. Now this movie is what percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, James? Ooh, I didn't even look. It's zero, dog. Uh, zero. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. This movie is so when I watch a movie, even if it's a bad movie, movie I know is gonna be bad. Something we do for this podcast. I feel like I generally have a I have a, a certain amount of faith in the filmmaking process and in the human ability to to like to craft a, a relatively coherent story, even if that story is problematic or banal or, or poorly told. Mm -hmm. The idea that th there are enough people involved in the filmmaking process to make something that, that does just basically hold together and fulfill the tenets of being a movie. Uh huh. This movie does not do any it of doesn't. that. It doesn't. It's complete fucking nonsense. It's incoherent. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say up front, most of the ideas I have are not really movie ideas as much as they are. <laughs> Ideas for things I want to see in a movie, because I feel like that's what this movie was, was a bunch of guys just in a room like, oh, what if what if there's a scene where a giant fan comes down from the ceiling and is going to chop them all up? What if there's a bunch of like 
industrial rave looking bird people on hoverboards for a few minutes. Exactly how many bullets can we put into Christopher Lambert before he drowns in fake blood? What if there's a scene where a porcupine man flies on metal wings and a bum asks him for a cigarette light so he lights him on fire? <laughs> Uh, yeah, can we, uh, can you play me the theme song for Give Him Your Worst First? Give him, give him, give him your worst first. Now give me the drop. Give him your worst first. <laughs> oh, man. Good shit. Uh, R.I.P. Aphex Twin. Um, so this is my worst idea. It's the Highlander movies are about a bunch of dudes who are immortal and have to have to um, become the final last immortal one, and the only way you can dispatch your enemies is by chopping off their head with a sword. Mm -hmm. What if instead of being the first one to chop off everyone else's head, you had to smooch them on the butt? <laughs> <laughs> like So they're just kind of rapidly circling each other on their hands and knees like dogs trying to get their lips <laughs> on the other's ass before the other one can get to theirs. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then the lightning comes and the quickening happens. It's got to be the same cast. It has to be Chris Chris Lambert and Sean Connery and fucking John C. McGinley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just scrambling uh, around as quick as they can. Yeah. Uh-huh. Try and smooch that ass. <laughs> Let's see. What's my worst idea? There's a lot of them. Uh... <laughs> Sean Connery in this movie walks into a suit store and pays for a, a new suit with an earring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this suit's going to take three weeks to make. Well, what if I gave you this ugly ass earring? Oh, -ho, <laughs> chop, chop, sir. <laughs> so how about a movie where that's like the hero's superpower? Like, you know, in uh, the Doctor Who, how the doctor has that magic piece of paper that he can show folks and they just read it as like whatever he th needs it to be in that situation. Yeah, it's psychic paper. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's like that. But like the hero can just pay for anything with whatever random bullshit he has in his pockets. Uh Oh, <laughs> you were uh, you're all back ordered on Tesla's. Well, what if I handed you this? um uh, receipt for Vagisil. Oh, yes, of course, sir. We'll get you one right away. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you about that time that I was uh, stuck in line at Walgreens behind a woman who was trying to return an open container of Vagisil? Why? Because it didn't work. <laughs> Probably just needed some better grooming habits at that point then. I'm I betting. don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I just know that I really admire the chutzpah it takes to try and return for money an open Vagisil container. Hey, look, you know, shit doesn't work. I shouldn't have to pay for it. Yeah. I got an idea here with um, there's a scene in this movie where uh, uh, Christopher Lambert kills one of the aforementioned porcupine bird folks by just stringing up a string in front of him and he hits it with his neck and his head just kind of pops off like a dandelion. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so I got an idea here where it's Highlander and the Highlander rules are the same. You, you can only kill another immortal by lopping off their heads. I know where this is going. Yeah, it's the easy off heads version. Their heads come yeah. off super easy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what if their necks are just super weak, though. <laughs> It's like in Buffy where you can put just about anything through the, the chest of a vampire and it'll kill him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. Like most of their day is spent like just avoiding neck level stuff or high fives or um, like or too stiff much pressure breezes. on their head. Yeah, they can't wear hats at all. Yeah. Mac, I don't know. That's a pretty big top hat. I'm sure it will be fine. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Knocked his block off. <laughs> Can we add a five second rule though, where if their head is only off for five seconds, you can just <laughs> pop it back on? Just scramble around and grab it and put it back on. <laughs> so the key to, yeah. de to defeating your opponents is typically continue to kick their head away from them. Yeah, it's just keep away. Mm -hmm. Oh, what if one of them <laughs> has to win the big soccer tournament, goes in for a header, knocks it clean off? Oh, no. And then the other players can't tell what's his head and what's the ball. Yeah. Or his head just and rolls so backwards and he gets an own goal. Mm, oh, that would suck. Yeah. And then he would die in an explosion of lightning. That'd be 
so not embarrassing. a good way to go out. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of the only ideas I have for an actual movie. Mm-hmm. It might also be the dumbest idea I have. Fuck yeah. Uh, Highlander, his last name is McLeod. Mm-hmm. There's another famous McLeod who I think needs a movie. Lakitu. I'm sorry? Lakitu? The guy who lives on a cloud in the Mario games? Oh, no, but it is a Nintendo movie. Let's make a Star Fox movie. Oh, that's good. I, I'm going to tell you the two things I know about Star Fox. Uh-huh. He's a fox who fly a plane. Mm-hmm. His friend is a frog. <laughs> I think a toad, actually. That's, okay, so that was the one thing I know about Star Fox. I've never played a Star Fox game. I know that you have to, you kind of got to fly a spaceship through a bunch of triangles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about Fox McCloud and Falco Lombardi and uh, Slippy Toad and Peppy Hair. And Peppy Hair? Yeah. Is that one hair? Mm-hmm. Is it a ball of hair? Yeah. No, he's a, he's a hair like a rabbit. Oh, I get it now. And, and but, uh, they fly yeah, jets. Yeah, so you're a bunch of space animals. They fly planes. Yeah, they fly like space planes. They fight a giant face in the sky. Well, that's cool. They all cut their legs off and put metal ones on so they can fly plane better. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> all the Star Fox folks, they got like they got metal legs. Like they cut them they cut their legs off and they get metal legs because the metal legs fly the plane better. Really? Yeah, that's true in canon. What? Why on earth? <laughs> because the metal legs fly the plane better. Do the planes have gas pedals that are just really heavy? I don't know. I, I think it's something about like the metal legs. Like It's also why Fox moves so fast in Smash Bros. Like The metal legs make him perform better. I don't know. Okay. So what's the plot of your movie? Well, you know, Star Fox, Fox McCloud, like, he's, he's joined. I don't know what their space fleet thing is called. They're just called Team Star Fox, though. He joined up Team Star Fox, which was started by his father, James McCloud, uh, who was killed many years ago by Andross, the giant evil face that I'm lived gonna, in the sky. I'm going to stop you right there. Fox McCloud, mm-hmm. his father was named James McCloud. Uh-huh. James was also a fox. Uh-huh. And had a son, and somebody said, what do you want to name your son? And he goes, Fox. <laughs> like, no, we know that you are a fox and you've had a fox son, but what do you want to name your son, James? Fox. He's a fox. Well, yeah, it's the same thing that happened when Guy Pierce was born. <laughs> <laughs> this is my son, human boy. <laughs> Can we, you want to tweak that a little? What? I'm a guy. He's a guy. Hey, okay. All right. Guys. <laughs> oh, man. Now I just want to see the movie Star Guy. <laughs> It's just all the other characters are the same, but it's just Guy Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> playing Guy Pierce. Yeah, I mean, maybe Bronze Pearson can have a cameo role. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got an idea here. It's, um, but it's another Highlander one. All the Highlander rules are also the same in this one. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's Pacifist Run. <laughs> I'm going to cut off your head. Fight me. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Leave me alone. So you just have to, like, basically you have to do what McCloud did in this movie where he killed the one fella by just making him fall on train tracks where you can't cause their heads to come off, but you just have to, like, create the circumstances that lead to their heads getting cut off. I don't have to kill you, but, I, but I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's that. I think you're legitimately our main character is a pacifist, and they don't want to hurt nobody. <laughs> they don't like conflict. Okay, maybe it's a trigun of a situation. Okay, but like trigun, he still does end up killing folks when he has to. He's just sad about it. Yeah, but well, yeah, I guess. Um, I think he kills folks accidentally all the time. Like he don't want to kill nobody, but these other fucking immortals just keep showing up at his house and screaming how there can be only one and he keeps trying to get them out, but they just keep swinging swords and he just keeps ducking their blows until like, you know, they yeah, walk maybe into a paper shredder or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like how in Tucker and Dale versus evil, how those teens kept running into like spiked logs wood chippers. And, yeah. Wood yeah. chippers and stuff murdering themselves. I think it's that. And maybe it is Alan Tudyke. Um, <laughs> yes, please. And he's just like, no, I don't want to fight you. Oh, it's better to, Burn out than to fade away. He's like, oops, I fell off these big I fell off of this staircase to nowhere on my own huge claymore. 
Darn it. <laughs> oh, got me right through the neck. Oops. Ouch, 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 ouch. I don't know why I was holding it straight out in front of me and pointed at me before I fell down them stairs. <laughs> yeah, and finally, there's only two. There's one guy who's been, like, slaughtering all of the other immortals, and then there's our our, our Alan Tudyk guy being like, no, I really don't. We can both just... What if there could only be you two? You want to go bowl? Like, there's there's cool stuff to do. Yeah, and so they go bowling together, and but then one of them accidentally drops the ball, and uh, the beat kicks in, <laughs> and have a big old rave. <laughs> <laughs> and the credits roll. Yep. I want to retcon our, our intro conversation and make it that every dubstep song that's ever been made, the drop was because someone accidentally dropped a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> Skrillex just like slipped on his mix board and created some cool noises. Yep. <laughs> okay. What else you got, James? Oh, boy. Um, so one of the many things that didn't make a lick of goddamn sense about this movie, uh, Sean Connery show up and like, doesn't know what anything is, like yeah. doesn't understand the concept of a play, like doesn't know what the word shithead means, pays for stuff with earrings, you know. For the record, I am always there for time displaced person doesn't know what anything is. I legitimately love that shit so much. Yeah, yeah. The whole so first season of Sleepy Hollow was basically just that, and I adored it. So you'll like this idea probably then, because it's kind of the inverse. So Connery shows up, doesn't know anything what's going on. Michael Ironside then shows up and like <laughs> knows what everything is. He does, and like, like slang talks and about stuff how too. he's yeah yeah like talks about how he's always wanted to drive a train. Says stuff like uh, "This isn't how you treat your first round draft pick" and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought it's a guy that talks like that, but he's in medieval times, so he's just constantly dropping like modern colloquialisms and expressions, but no one fucking knows what the hell he's talking about. So it's, you know, it's like, it's like a fantasy epic, you know, it's the classic like scene in a saloon or the, yeah, those old medieval bar. saloons that you, that you see in every movie. You know movie. what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> like at the beginning of like Berserk or anything like that, where they're in like a bar and there's, or Samurai Shampoo does it too. And there's like a group of ruffians sitting at a table mm -hmm. and they start to kind of like harass the waitress for some reason. And then our cloaked hero stands up and cuts them all to bits. But then he says something like, um, check, please. Yeah. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> check, check what or for for whomst? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, he just accidentally knows modern idioms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's really funny. <laughs> or maybe he's like from the future. And so he goes back in time and he's like, ooh, I can be a cool hero now. I can say all these things for the first time, but, like, he's way too far ahead of the <laughs> curve. Way too early. <laughs> I'll have what she's having. She's having, she's having, she's having, she's having, she's having minced dormice. I don't want that. <laughs> sounds Would fucking you like the gross. minced dormouse? It's, it's only three shingles. <laughs> Peel your shingles off of your back and hand them to me. That's our currency. <laughs> It's medieval times. Everything's super gross. <laughs> Don't throw that pee away. We need it. Boy, I've heard of skin off my back before, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> what? I don't. What's ridiculous? I don't understand. We we peel skin off of people's backs all the time for lots of different reasons. You can do it at the barber. <laughs> we believe that it cures rickets. <laughs> I got it. So I got an idea here. Is so. Part of the plot of this movie is that the Highlander man, McLeod, Connor, I always want to call him Duncan. Um, mm -hmm. Duncan, I think, is in the later sequels that are animes. Well, Duncan is from the TV show. Oh. And then right. Duncan also, they started to do TV show movie crossover movies that did have Duncan and Connor in them. Any who's it's, he suddenly becomes a scientist between the first and second movies. <laughs> yeah. And invents a big... Does his wife die. Yeah, he invents a big electromagnetic shield that protects the Earth from the sun's rays and saves everybody's life. Mm -hmm. But everybody's real fucking salty about it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get what what was going on with that. I I didn't see the last two minutes of this movie, I guess. But like, what 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 was the whole deal? The like people, thousands of people were just being radiated to death by the sun. Highlander builds a sun shield for the Earth, and then like twenty years later, it bad now. Well, the sun, the sky did heal itself. 
but everyone's mad because of the uh, the sky is ugly. And he's like, I saved that one lady in the bar. He's like, I saved your life. And she's like, yeah, but my life is a little bit shitty. So I actually eat shit. Um, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I had an idea for a movie about uh, a super scientist who saves the whole world from uh, an impending asteroid that's going to destroy all life on Earth. But it's 2018 and it's the world we live in now. So everyone's super fucking mad at him. The asteroid was going to crash into the Earth and end all human life. We know. We were fucking stoked and you ruined it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Have you been outside? It's terrible here. <laughs> I was thinking it would just be, you know, a bunch of people who believe the asteroid is good, actually. No, they did, but they were right, because the world is shit. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking more like, oh, the asteroid was going to destroy the Earth. No, it was an idiot. Mercury, Mercury's in retrograde. Like, the asteroid was just going to realign our chakras. I mean, you'd probably get a lot of that also. Yeah. The Earth's flat. The asteroid was just going to hit it on the side and spin it around like a big coin. And then God was going to choose who could stay on and who would get flung off into outer space. The asteroid would have fixed global warming because it would have flipped us over to the other side. So we'd be facing down and it'd get colder. My husband's ghost was on that asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> who knows how many endangered Bigfoots you've killed with your <laughs> missile debris. Oh... What else you got, James? Oh, uh... Mm. I don't care if they're actual movie ideas as long as they're funny. Okay. Uh, H Hover Knights? Hover Knights. With a K or with yeah, an just N? With a K. Just just a cool name I wrote down for those cool big bird people uh, on their hoverboards and jetpacks and whatever. But I think it's just a bunch of dudes in old-timey suits of armor with big old swords, but they're all on hoverboards. Can I, um... Ooh, so here's the thing. Are you familiar with Steamed Punk? I am, yeah. Uh huh. Now, steamed punk is a super technologically advanced version of the 1800s, like industrial times. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever done medieval steampunk? So we've used the technology available to us in in the medieval times to create stuff like hoverboards and computers and and horseless carriages and etc. Uh, but we're still, you know, doing doing knightly stuff with swords. So it'd be like stone punk. Well, it's not the Stone Age, though, is it, James? Bronze punk? Not the Bronze Age either. Iron punk. Iron punk is the answer. <laughs> yeah, that's rad as shit. So yeah, iron what, punk, dude. So like, what would the aesthetic be like? Because obviously steampunk, you know, you're setting it during steam engine time, so everything's like all brassy and there's lots of cogs and mm -hmm. obviously steam. What's the what's the iron punk aesthetic? What does their tech look like? I think I dirty and just... rusty and covered in shit. And made partially out of wood. And, like, looks like it was beat with a hammer by an actual blacksmith. Have you seen that movie, um, It's Hard to Be a God? No. You should. It's wonderful. But that's the aesthetic. Do a quick Google image search of It's Hard to Be a God, because that's the aesthetic that I'm thinking here. Um, so people yeah, literally just... these nasty pictures. Like, hack loogies on stuff, and there's just piles of shit everywhere, and everything's really dirty and gross, and everyone's sick and stupid and nasty. That's kind of the aesthetic that I'm thinking, but, like... They have actually developed the technology, but just using what was available at the time. So they have mm -hmm. made, you know, they have made the horseless carriages. They have made maybe some flying machines. Uh, maybe they've got big old collar, collars on their shirts, but the big old collars have, um, you know, they've got little robot arms that can pick stuff up. I don't know. <laughs> The entire upper class wears, like, those plague masks, but the plague masks are, like, VR headsets. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Also, they're full of, like, Slurpees. <laughs> <laughs> we can't let the peasants have the Slurpee technology. Hide it with a big beak thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Queen wrote the theme song to this movie and the first Highlander movie. Uh-huh. And the first Highlander movie, their song is very, very good, and it adds a lot of gravitas, because the song they wrote for the first Highlander movie is Who Wants to Live Forever, Who which is this... Who wants to live forever? They did the yeah. whole fucking soundtrack for the first movie, dude. Yeah. Yeah, so Who Wants to Live Forever really works in the first movie, because it's this like slow, you know, somber kind of contemplation that ties in with that movie's themes about how shitty Connor McLeod, McLeod's immortal life is. Ooh, did a little bit of an accent there by accident. Connor McLeod. Connor yeah. McLeod. <laughs> uh, 
But in this movie, the theme song is a kind of magic, which is a really goofy, like almost like doo woppy sounding queen song complete with like finger snaps. But they integrated it into this movie so hard that there's uh, like two different points where Christopher Lambert says, let's just say it's a kind of magic. Yeah, I do love that, though, because it's also very much um, like kind of the attitude of this movie towards plot development. It's like, how does Sean Connery come back? How does any of this stuff work? Why are you young again now? It's like, I don't know. It's kind of magic. <laughs> yeah. It's kind he of- says, what is, what's the thing he says like five times to five different people when they ask? Oh, something like that. Whenever anyone's <laughs> like, oh, so is it this and it works this way? And he's like, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, my idea was just have, uh, have Queen like inappropriately score more movies. And the first one that came to mind was I really want hammer to fall in a thor movie because that song's fucking great because at first it sounds like just an ordinary like you know 70s era big arena rock song just slamming guitars and blah 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 second verse comes in and freddie mercury goes used to be a man in a minute and then he sings boop diddy diddy boop diddy do and then that comes in between every line of every other verse in the song so I know that we were trying to avoid making superhero movies all the time now, but uh, I don't hate the idea of making a, um, when did the original Highlander come out? 1988, 89. I don't hate the idea of making a, uh, a, a, we've never actually, we've made period movies before, but we've never made a movie that was from a period. So what if we made a Thor movie that was actually made in the late 1980s and scored by Queen and cast with people who were prominent and acting in the late 1980s and had the kind of budget that a Thor movie made in the late, like, pre-superhero blow-up would actually have? But it still has, like, the same plot as the first Thor movie or not? No, fuck that. It's just Thor. Uh, I think that, um, I think, you know how in some of the old Thor comics, like, not the original ones, but kind of in, like, the late 70s, early 80s Thor comics, he talks in, like, that fake medieval dialect thing? Yeah, uh huh. Uh, I think he talks like that. I think so, like he did in the first Thor movie. <laughs> I think he's one hundred percent played by Dolph Lundgren. Oh Jesus! Uh, yeah, I, yeah, with a big old mm-hmm. fake beard on. <laughs> I think Better Ray Bill is one hundred percent there and made out of puppets. <laughs> Who played Loki? Um, Judd Nelson. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I was gonna say Eric Roberts. Ooh, ooh, also good. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a big, goofy, cheap, pageanty, queen scored Thor movie. Fuck yes. And Hammer to Fall is the big theme song. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful, and I would watch it. I've got an idea here. So, James, remember when we saw a screen in the subway playing a clip for a TV show called Psychic Cook? Uh-huh. I would and watch the that fucking there. movie. <laughs> I would too. I would just watch like, Psychic Cook. <laughs> so the like the ghosts show up to help him cook or something. Yeah. And like as the camera was panning away, the male ghost started strangling the female ghost. Yeah. So I really like the idea of Psychic Cook and he summons the ghosts and the ghosts are supposed to help him cook, but they keep getting sidetracked with their bullshit. They're too rowdy. <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, today I have with me uh, Michael Rosenblatt, who's going to help show me how to make his grandmother's chicken fried steak. And Michael is like, yes, and then afterwards I will f- we will find the identity of the man who killed me, and I will seek my vengeance. Okay, all right, but right now, how many panko breadcrumbs do I need to put in this bowl? <laughs> he had long, dark raven hair. He had a, s- a distinctive scar on his right hand. Yeah, I also... I also like that the ghost would do stuff just like, um, you know, vomit sludge into the whisked eggs or <laughs> or like make blood squirt out of the pies that they've just finished baking. <laughs> All right. Now we're just going to pop these over in the toaster oven. Oh, d- damn it, Artie. You got it filled with ectoplasm again. Oh, yuck. It's all sticky. Oh, now it's dancing to an old 60s song. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just Psychic Cook. That <laughs> that one thing was a better idea than anything else in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I got another idea here, and again, this is, this is retreading some territory that we've tread on this podcast before, but there's a couple of fellas in this movie with quills sticking out of their heads that look like big old porcupines. Yeah. 
or hedgehogs. Yeah. So I want to make a, a, a really shitty low budget like Super Mario Brothers style uh, or Cats costume style Sonic the Hedgehog movie where it's just people, uh, just people playing uh-huh. them and they're just, but it's a guy like with quill stick on the back of his head just painted blue. Yeah. Hold on one sec. I'm going to send you an image. I know what image you're going to send me, but I can't wait. <laughs> do, do you? I'm pretty sure I do. You get, you're me hard pressed to find a weird Sonic image on the internet that I haven't looked at. <laughs> oh, that's not what I thought you were going to send me, but holy <laughs> shit, that's good. Will something like that? Yeah. Oh, man, I really like that. <laughs> I'm going to save that image. Oh, man, he's got such a saucy look on his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for the audio podcast, what uh, what I'm looking at here is a young man, kind of looks like Eric Trump, to be honest with you, who has uh, roughly painted his face w- blue and white like a Sonic and a little black nose, and then has just some blue construction paper taped to the front of his head. <laughs> and he's given, a, he's given a real, like, ooh, lips pouted and teeth clenched and eyes to, staring directly at the camera kind of a face that uh, is just, oh, there's fan art of this picture. <laughs> is there? Yeah. Yeah, that checks out. He looks a little bit like Brian David Gilbert. I'm not going to lie. Um, anyway, yeah, it's just one of those is the movie. Yeah. What else do you have, James? <laughs> um, I, I'm going to throw both of these at you at once because they're both dumb and real similar. Uh, so this movie opens and Christopher Lambert's real old. Yeah. And he's watching an and opera that's... And he talks that's... with a voice like all old people do. Oh, my God. He talks with... All right, I'm gonna go with that one first. Then he he talks like uh he talks like, like, like a regular a hack, old man, like all old men do. Yeah, like not even a hack comedian's impression of an old person, like a middle schooler's impression of an old person, where he's just doing this like, "What are you doing here? What's going on? Oh, I'm very old. Oh, I'm so old. I'm going <laughs> yeah, to get so, my convertible with the top down in the rain." <laughs> So first idea, uh, it's a movie about a, a guy who's immortal, but like one of the lives he's living, like he likes it. So he wants to stick around for a while. So he has to just pretend to age and get old, but he's very bad at it. Oh, wow. Sorry. Hold on. Now I'm Googling Sanic Hedgehog memes. <laughs> oh, Sanic? Yeah. So now I want to just go back and retcon real quick in our movie is a Sanic Hedgehog movie. <laughs> Come on, step it up. <laughs> okay uh i swear to god i'm listening now i'm closing the sanic window oh nope there he is again okay now go ahead <laughs> yeah he's just he's just a he's an immortal guy who like wants to live he likes the life he's in and he wants to live it for longer so he has to pretend to get old but he's very bad at it oh okay so it's like a um uh, we've referenced this movie on here before but it's like a man from earth kind of a situation only instead mm-hmm. of packing up and moving every 15 years or so, he just puts more crease lines on his face. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing his stage makeup a little better. Yeah, that's really, I feel like that's really exhausting. Every morning you got to wake up, put on a little makeup, you know. Hide the scars, fade away the shakeup. Yeah, did you put the keys upon the table? Why did you put the keys up on the table? <laughs> I wanted to. Oh, all right. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to. <laughs> What if that's Oh, I'm very old. Now, what if that's a world? What if it's a dystopian kind of a thing? You know, just like in our society how like how like a lot of women feel like they have to put on makeup to to um to a, and I'm not saying that that's the only reason people wear makeup. A lot of people wear makeup cuz they like it and they're good at it and it's fun. And that's wonderful. But you know, like mm-hmm. there's a societal expectation of beauty standards make people a lot of people feel like they have to put on makeup. Yeah. Well, what if it was a dystopian society where everyone was ageless and immortal? But for some reason, society's beauty standards changed to make only really old people be really hot. <laughs> uh, so now everybody's under like five pounds of latex, like Johnny Knoxville in that grandpa movie. Yeah, it's a whole world of bad grandpas. Yeah. <laughs> because that's all that, like, oh man, I, you know, I just look in the magazines. I look in, in L and in GQ and, in, and, and other ones. And all I see are these people who've been, and it's mostly Photoshop, right? But they're all, their necks hanging down three feet off of their head and their faces covered in liver spots and their varicose veins. Oh man, it's an unachievable beauty standard, but I'm going to do my best. Slap it all, slap all that makeup on. (laughs) Yeah, because once they've become immortal, like old people, you know, they all went away pretty quick and they became so 
rare after a time and so unique that they were beautiful in their own right. And after they were all gone, society just wanted to keep replicating that. Yeah. 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 I think that is literally a Rick and Morty bit, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, anyway, others. Yeah. Other... It's called, sorry, real quick. It's called Bad Grandpa Worlds. <laughs> Bad Grandpa Bloodlines. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bad Grandpa Infinity. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, other idea, very similar to that. Uh, Chris Plummer, big, or Chris Plummer, Chris Lambert, beginning of this movie, he's very old. Mm -hmm. um, and he's watching an opera that seems like it's about Highlander. Yeah, also the opera had better production values than the movie the opera was in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what if, basically my pitch is like, what if, the Highlander was real and he had to watch Highlander too. Like a movie about an immortal guy <laughs> who's lived a really interesting life and he's trying to sell his life story, but the final product comes out very, very bad. Yeah. And it is Duncan McLeod. Who's the real one. And Connor McLeod only <laughs> exists in the movies. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, because why would you change my name to Connor? Look, we just think it, we just think it's a little better. You know, it's got a little better flow. Connor McLeod. It okay, feels what more is all this masculine shit about, like, to I'm, me? What do you mean more masculine? Yeah, fuck you. What is all this shit about? I build a fucking sun shield because my wife got raped. My wife is right here. <laughs> She's right here. She's also immortal. Why would I marry a mortal person? Are you guys thinking about this at all? Also, I love the idea that like normally when you, uh, a real life person is cast by an actor in a movie, the actor is better looking than the real life person is. But Adrian Paul is yeah. 100 degrees hotter than fucking Christopher Lambert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the studio just keeps fucking it up. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, never mind. I thought maybe their last names were spelled differently, but they're not. They're both just spelled really goofy. Because it's not, you'd expect McLeod to be spelled M-C-C-L-O-U-D, but it's M-A-C-L-E-O-D. Yeah, it looks like McLeod. Also, I know we're in the film repair department, not the film understandy department, but like, he, why, if he comes from an alien planet, why is his name Connor McLeod and why do people call him the Highlander? Do they then send him to Scotland because he'll already fit in there? I thought like once they sent got to Earth, their memories. Were, I I have I have no fucking idea. This movie didn't make any goddamn sense. But they all called him the Highlander, before he was the Highlander. <laughs> yeah, they do call him Highlander on the alien planet, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe once he got to Earth, he ended up in like you know France or whatever, and he just heard, pe which is how he picked up his accent, obviously. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh. And he just heard people talking about Scotland, and he heard someone mention it as the Highlands. And he was like, the, the what? Huh? Ooh, that I gotta get me, me there. They, yeah. <laughs> them name like my name. <laughs> Do we have any other ideas, James? Uh, I wrote down just a movie where Chris Lambert plays as many different nationalities as possible with his French-ass accent. So kind of like, you know that movie Master of Disguise? Yeah. or the kind of like the, that. The spirit. No, what's it called? Not the spirit. The saint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With Val Kilmer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like that, but where those movies are built around like people who are, you know, good at playing different characters and doing funny voices or whatever. It's just Chris Lambert sounding like Chris Lambert every time. Yeah. But every once in a while, he'll put on the old man voice. <laughs> yeah. But he's still just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Canadian now. It's like, well, okay. I guess it's you can me, be Chris from Lambert Quebec. and I'm from Canada. Yeah. Okay, I guess you could be from Quebec. Oh, now I'm from Ireland. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now I'm from France. Okay, yep. All right, stick stick with that one. No, it's me, Chris Lambert, from Colombia. Well, I don't know. <laughs> also, you call yourself Chris Lambert every time. <laughs> I mean, I'm I mean uh, Raiden from Colombia. <laughs> I got one other real bad one. Okay. Uh, I. I, I would also watch a whole movie where Sean Connery just doesn't know what swear words are. <laughs> <laughs> watch Pish. Watch a motherfucker. Are, am I a motherfucker? Do you, do you have children? Yes. Well, then, I mean, yeah. Who's this bastard you keep mentioning? <laughs> James, are any of these ideas movies? <laughs> we could make the Star Fox movie. 
I wasn't crazy about the Star Fox movie. You don't want to watch a movie about a bunch of anthropomorphized animals cutting off their legs and sewing on cyborg parts so they can fly spaceships into a giant evil face in the sky that throws polygons at them. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't feel very movie improvey to me because we're just straight up adapting a property. That's accurate. You know what I mean? Yeah. I Like, if we're going to adapt a video game character, I'd rather make the Sanic movie. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, not opposed. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Sanic and Tolls and Norkels. <laughs> it looks like it was filmed in somebody's basement. <laughs> it looks like Trash Humpers. Yeah. Um, yeah, none of these are really, really turning my crank. I don't hate the, uh, um, the Iron Punk idea. Uh, we could also make Weekend at Christie's. Yeah, I really like Weekend at Christie's. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Weekend at Christie's. Yeah, we're going to do Weekend at Christie's for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Starring oh. Sanic. Is Sanic there? He's he's the star. Wait, so Sanic is is one of the apostles? No, he's Jesus. Well, <laughs> that's confusing. <laughs> Why? Maybe let's just, just let's relegate Sanic just, to it's... maybe a background cameo. <laughs> okay, he just run, just run, just runs by in the background a few times. Yeah, I like that better. Hey, Peter, I don't know if this disguise on Jesus is gonna work. Sanic runs up. You gotta step it up. Runs off. <laughs> <laughs> or okay maybe that's it maybe that's how we get it in there is um is they're they're trying to disguise jesus to get him past the roman guards and they they paint him up like sonic <laughs> oh sonic's here oh do oh can i get a picture yeah so that's how we solve that problem um okay so yeah it's got to be two of the apostles who are the dumbest apostles barry and gill no i want i want real apostles we're just gonna characterize them. I'm just gonna Google. I'm just dumbest. The dumbest. <laughs> we did the exact same thing. <laughs> okay, so uh, I got Mark here. Mark apparently is stupid and disbelieving. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and Peter is really one? impulsive, according to Middletown Bible Church. Okay, yeah, Mark and Peter. It's gonna be Mark and Peter. And um, yeah, they really told everybody. They really sold everybody on this idea of Jesus gonna come back. He's a Messiah. Uh, check him out. Look at all of this cool tricks he can do walking on that water. Peter's already invested in his cool Pope hat. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, right? They both had a lot of money riding on this whole we've created a religion thing. Like, oh, are those donations going to be flooding in, build a new church to our God, but he's got to wake up. We told everybody he's going to wake up. Oh, man, I told my boss. Oh, I told my boss that Jesus was going to come back to life, and that's why I missed all those days. Oh, shoot, my boss is... Waiting outside the cave, tapping his toes. <laughs> they keep, it wasn't originally supposed to be three days. They just kept pushing it back while they came up with a plan. Yeah, he's going to, Jesus will die and come back in three hours. No, we, we did say, we said, we said days. We got to, three we're gonna days. Go, we're going to go check on him real quick. Oh, Jesus? Jesus? Yeah, he's calling us in. We're going to go, we're going to go check on him real quick. <laughs> so he's back. No, um, no, he just uh He's resting. Well, he, he popped in he popped in for a sec. He po- he popped back for a sec to let us know he and uh his dad had some stuff to work out. He's he, he'll be back in like 3 days. 3 days tops. In 3 days and he did ask us he said that the sun is really bright now because his eyes have witnessed the glory of heaven, so he's going to need some shades and uh he's got a list of other things that he needs us to get. Also his legs are still super tired from being on that cross for so long, so we're going to have to help him walk out of there. Um but yeah, yep, meantime, yep, yep, yep. we're just gonna push this big old we're just gonna push this big old boulder in front of this here cave. Just everybody go about your business. Reconvene three days. So yeah, then they come back and uh what kind of wacky hijinks do you think they get into with their with their dead pal Christ? Do you think they maybe try and recreate some of Jesus' greatest hits? Because they're like, Man, we what did he do when he was alive? Oh, knock over the merchant tables in the temple, and they just like swing his body into the tables and like knock him over and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, they just, like, they want him to walk on water, so they just huck him into the lake. 
<laughs> like he is a dead body, so he do float. And then everybody's like, "Oh wow, he's he's sliding on the water, belly first. That's amazing. So radical." No, they put him on a surfboard actually. <laughs> it is, oh, they use the holes that are already in his feet, and they just nail him down to that <laughs> surfboard. <laughs> Maybe he's got a pole sticking up from it, and they kind of just lean him against that and nail his feet to the board, so he's just sort of, like, swaying with the waves. <laughs> oh, shit! I thought walking on water was cool, but scar- now he's carving the waves! That's super tubular. Yeah, he's just, like, Homer Simpson-style coincidentally doing cool flips and tricks. Also, I do want to go back to our Thor idea and retroactively have this movie be made in the 1980s. By Paul Verhoeven. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he could strike the right tone. Yeah. So it does star Arnold Schwarzenegger then. Um yes. Well it doesn't star him. At- he does play the corpse of Christ. I was gonna say, yeah, Ar- Arnie's Jesus. Yeah, he's the dead Jesus body. With a Hear real- me. Hear me, all ye faithful. <laughs> the meek shall inherit the earth. Do we ever see Jesus alive, though? Because we never see Bernie alive in Weekend at Bernie's. Do we? I don't remember. I don't either. I think we have to for the first, you know, f- I think it opens with the crucifixion. What do you, James, uh, What? Do, give me a little taste of what uh, what Arnie sounds like getting crucified. Ah, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter, do you know me? Ah, ah, this, this crown of thorns is so pointy on my head. I've got blood in my eyes. Wait, that was not Arnold. I don't know what voice I was doing there. <laughs> it was like Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got blood in my eyes. Oh, it's running out of my head. Oh, no, they're nailing me to this cross. <laughs> um, yeah, do we have like a maybe a romantic subplot in there at all? With Mary Magdalene? Yeah, because, I mean, in the 1980s movies, there's always, like, bikini-clad ladies and stuff, right? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is Andy McDowell playing uh, Mary Magdalene. Mm-hmm. And, and they just, P- Peter and, which two did we go to? Peter and Mark just got to, uh, you know, just kind of put their hand on Jesus' head and, like, give her a smooch on the forehead. Um, now, I've got a fun idea. Let's, now, we've already cast Mary Magdalene and Jesus of Christ. But you know mm-hmm. how normally we randomize movies by uh, rolling some dice in like a 2018 movie list? Yeah. Let's do it with a 1987 movie list. Okay. What other characters do we have? Who's our, what's our, uh, what's our conflict? Who's our main antagonist who's like maybe onto the scheme and trying to out these fuckers? I think it's Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Pontius, ooh, Pontius Pilate and Judas. Yeah, so Pontius and Judas are both real mad that Jesus came back because they uh, super wanted him dead. So they're, uh, you know, I think maybe, wait, who are there? So there's got to be somebody that they're trying to prove that Jesus is alive to who's like, who won't believe them. I think that's got to be John the Baptist. Oh, okay. Okay. But Pontius and Judas are like kind of, um, kind of like running, like trying to kill him again. So they're setting up, Judas is working for Pontius, setting up all these elaborate plots to try and kill him, but he doesn't realize he's already a dead body. Oh, they don't even know he's dead. Right. I was thinking they were just like trying to orchestrate situations where Mark and Peter would accidentally out themselves. Okay. I mean, I like Judas, Judas, like they had a party, you know, and Mark and Peter have, you know, they're holding Jesus up and Jesus is having this real chill conversation with John the Baptist. And then Judas walks up and is like, hey, Jesus, what's that? uh, What's that really cool secret handshake that you and I had that? Only you and I did. Can you, do, would you just, you know, I missed you during those three days, man. Would you just, would you just do me the solid of showing me that handshake that we had this one time? So maybe all three forces are at place. So maybe John the Baptist is sort of like a principal uh, or a um, tr- pr- uh, superintendent Chalmers kind of a character who is uh, <laughs> really, really um, incredulous, but also not particularly bright. And that's who they have yeah, to constantly okay. try and pull the wool over their eyes. Meanwhile, John, um, Judas is acting as the, the sort of, you know, kind of Jennifer Grey-esque wet blanket who, like, knows that they're pulling a prank and wants to expose it. And also, meanwhile, Pontius Pilate is sending his, like, uh, dumbest Roman soldier to try and oh, finish the job this time, but uh, <laughs> can't quite pull it off. Yeah. This movie sounds fucking good. Yeah, this sounds really good. I'm glad we did this one. 
Um, all right, so I've got a list of the top U.S. grossing feature films released in 1987. Um, let's cast this Mamma Jamma. First up, who's going to play our Peter? The movie is Empire of the Sun. And the actor is 1987's Leslie Phillips. So it is a very nice. old... Nice. Very old apostle. <laughs> yeah. Because in, in 1987, Leslie Phillips was still 63 years old. <laughs> yeah, why not? Look, but all very popes funny. Old. All popes are old, and that's a tradition that started with Peter. Yeah, uh, Peter was old and real dumb and bro-y, and um, was Leslie Phillips. Look, Leslie Phillips was very funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if Leslie Phillips did anything problematic that I don't know about, just, um, I don't know, I guess this he filmed this movie before. If any of these actors that we cast did anything super problematic that we don't know about, um, they they filmed this movie before that happened. Yeah. Uh, so how about Mark? Extreme Prejudice. Oh, look. Who we got? It's Rip Torn. Hell yeah. <laughs> so we've got a pretty old <laughs> Mark and Peter. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. Oh, shit. Phil. Huh. This movie, Extreme Prejudice, yeah. has Clancy Brown and Michael Ironside in it. Weird. That's both the bad guys from both Highlanders. Yeah, that's crazy. What are the chances? Pretty good, because those guys were in a fucking mountain of movies. Yeah, that's true. Um, Let's cast our Pontius Pilate. That butthole. Yeah. Unless you just want it to be David Bowie. <laughs> no. Because I think it's a very different Pontius Pilate than Bowie's. Yeah, more of a like a slapstick kind of a Pontius Pilate. Yeah. No, that quiet regality that Bowie brought to the role. If we weren't setting this in the 80s, I should say I would say it should be like Steve Coogan or something. Uh, so our movie for Pontius Pilate is the is the movie Nuts, which I've never in my life heard of, but does have Barbara Streisand in it. Mm hmm. And our Pontius Pilate is going to be uh, is going to be Barbara Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Hell yeah. Fucking Look, she's commanding. Out. She's commanding. She's domineering. She can pull that off. Yeah. Uh no, for sure. I mean, is she is she in drag? Is she yenteled out or is it just regular Barbara Streisand? No, I think it's just Barbara Streisand. Okay, cool. With like sparkly sequins armor. Ooh, I love that. Does she have a musical number? Hell yes. I think she keeps trying to do her musical number, but is constantly interrupted by her idiot soldiers. Ugh. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of which, let's cast the bumbling soldier who's trying to finish the job on Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, people are really going to love this episode. <laughs> yeah. This isn't going to piss off anybody at all. Nope. All right. So this one's Can't Buy Me Love. And our bumbling Roman soldier is going to be Dennis Dugan. The guy who directed Happy Gilmore, Dennis Dugan? Yes. Okay. That's the one. Checks out. <laughs> He's our bumbling uh, Roman soldier named Serta Pissus Minimus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, who else we got? Judas. Judas. And then John the Baptist, and then we're done. Uh, huh. From the movie what? Benji the Hunted, which I now desperately want to watch. Benji is left in the wilderness after an accident. Can he survive? I don't know if this one's going to work because none of these people even have pictures. Yeah, except for Benji. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Benji's going to work as Judas. <laughs> it's a very charismatic dog, Phil. Let's try that again. Okay. All right, from the movie Revenge of the Nerds 2, Nerds in Paradise, it's going to be Donald Gibb. Played ogre, ogre in the nerd movies. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. It's ogre. Damn, that's a big fucking Judas right there. Yeah, he needs all that silver, all them silver pieces to buy himself special big and tall clothes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't find sandals that fit my big big feet. I need I need some scratch. <laughs> hey, I'm Pontius Pilate. Want to help me murder Jesus? Uh, last but not least, from the movie. The Lost Boys. Oh, so many good choices there. Our John the Baptist is going to be 1987's 
Bernard Hughes. <laughs> This movie's so old. This is so old. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping for a Corey Feldman. Yeah, no, we got Bernard Hughes. Who in 1987 was... Uh, he was... He, 62 years old. Yeah, he was 62 at the time. Or no, 72. Yeah, he was 72. Why are the 72. apostles so old? <laughs> This Bible times, know, they were all actually only now. 25. They just look old as shit. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> the quality of life was so bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Wow, I think we've done it. What Are we Are we calling this Weekend at Christie's? I think so. Yeah, I think that's got to be it. Yep. Uh, or, I mean, God's not dead, tubular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that one. It's that one. <laughs> <laughs> God's not dead tubular. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely that's really it. good. And the cover is is uh is Arnie and his and his beard and sunglasses propped up on a on a surfboard carving waves mm-hmm. in the Dead Sea. Yep. Doing the Jesus pose. It's the Dead Sea because it's the dead it's called that because of the salt, but also because he's dead and he's surfing on it. Yep, that is where it got its name. Yeah. James, I guess all that's left to do is say thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for listening. Um, If you uh, are still listening now, after uh, that just wanton display of blasphemy, (laughs) then uh, we treasure you and we love you. And this podcast is clearly for you. So you should probably subscribe to it. (laughs) If you sat through that, you're going to sit through anything that we're going to say. So please subscribe to the podcast on Apple, you know, podcasts or wherever else podcasts are sold. Uh, leave us a rating and review so more people can discover the podcast. Tell your fucking friends. I mean, carefully consider which of your friends would want to listen to what you've just heard and then tell them about it because they sound dope also. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you to Cusick for the use of their song Dragonfly is our theme song. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Movie Improver. You can follow me on Twitter at Phil Stressman. You can follow James on Twitter at Doc Professor Man, which sounds like a character from that Guy Pierce um, Human Star Fox movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is uh huh um no my father was a professor professor is my first name we're both men <laughs> um my my mother was general woman <laughs> yeah I think that's it follow us on Instagram at movie underscore improve if you want I'm usually posting some goofy shit over there otherwise uh might James be, might be all Sanic memes this week yeah it's gonna be a lot of Sanic I'm not gonna lie James I think uh I think that's a Chinatown salesman. As we say in Italy, hey, that's a Chinatown. Wait, really? They say that? Do they have Chinatowns (laughs) in Italy? (laughs) No, Phil, that was the joke. Little Chinatown, Sicily. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, until next time. I mean, they might. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the Chinese population in Italy. James, I kind of want to change our our sign-off phrase to come on, step it up. (laughs) (laughs) It is more fitting to our brand, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I'm also because getting... we are telling we are telling these bad movies to step it up. Uh, I I'm getting sick of finding ways to say it's Chinatown. Also, yeah. Um, well, until next yeah, week, gang. Okay. Come on, step it up. Come on, step it up. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>